Hi everyone, starting out with some good news and some bad news. Um, first good news, I bumped my yoga um, workout from beginner to intermediate. I thought it was going to be too tricky and it was pretty tricky, but I kept up and feeling pretty good after that workout this morning. Bad news. Oh, I had to wait so long today to do a recording. Mr. Stafford and Kennedy were on a conference call and um, I wanted to make sure it was quiet enough for us to get started. Um, so we are getting started with our joke of the day. How do you know that the moon has had enough to eat when it's full, of course? Get it? Full moon. Try and tell someone that joke today. Put a smile on their face. Speaking of smiles, our positive affirmation this week is my happiness is up to me. You know, some people um, choose to focus on the stormy and I don't think they feel very good. So when you choose to, you know, work on the stormy, but really spend time thinking happy thoughts and sunshiny things, your body and your mind will feel better. Then you'll feel happier. Birthday shout outs, Alexandra and Alexa, you have birthdays today in second grade. Happy birthday, girls. Also, some shout outs. I got to see these smiles in person yesterday. Hi, Riley and Priscilla. I got to see Jackson and Emma and Nolan. Thanks for bringing smiles to my face, too. Let's see. Oh, we're ready to get started with All About Sam. Um, yesterday, we learned that Sam um, was getting ready to find an item for show and tell to bring to school. And he realized, you know what, I'm not that good at show and tell. I'm good at a lot of other things, but show and tell isn't one of my best. So he's trying really hard to find something that he feels good about bringing into school and that the other kids will like. You know, it's okay to realize that you're good at some things and maybe other things are a little more challenging. That's normal. So focus on the things you're good at and keep getting better. And then you can practice the things that are challenging to get better at those. So um, let's head into a little relaxation before we start our story today. We're going to continue this week's tapping practice. Hopefully you've been tapping this week with me and um, teaching somebody new in your house um, about how good it could make you feel. So starting out with a deep breath in. Ten on the top. They say that tapping is helpful because it hits different points of your body that send messages to your brain to relax that amygdala, that worry center of your brain, and it helps to um, calm down that cortisol, that um, hormone that is released when you're feeling stressed. So it helps maybe to get that cortisol out of the brain a little bit, so you don't need as much. All right, here we go. Vocabulary, quavery. Hmm, that is definitely a new word that I don't hear very much, but you'll hear it today in the story. Listen for it, and we'll see if we can figure out what it means. Here we go, heading to circle time with Sam. Skipper had pasted a fat, smiling sun on the calendar Monday. Mrs. Bennett had played You Are My Sunshine on the piano while all the children sang. Altogether, they stood in the circle and said the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, Sam had said in his most grown-up voice with his hand over his heart. His other hand was in the pocket of his jeans, holding on to his secret for show and tell. Everyone called me, me, when Mrs. Bennett said, who has something for show and tell today? Mrs. Bennett looked around the circle and said, let's let Amy go first. Amy? And Sam made a face. He didn't like Amy much. She had a long ponytail, which was perfect for pulling, especially if she flipped it around right in front of your face. <laughs> but if you pulled it, Amy cried and she told on you, as she should. Amy stood, 
flipped her long ponytail and held up a postcard. My grandma sent me this, she said from Florida. Everybody stared politely at the picture of a palm tree. My grandma sent me a postcard from Florida, Rosie said, and it had an alligator on it. I saw a real alligator at the zoo, Adam yelled. Two alligators I saw. And all the children began making alligators out of their hands, snapping them like big jaws, grabbing each other's sleeves, pulling fiercely the, the way they imagined real alligators would. But Sam didn't. He was still holding on to that surprise in his pocket. Thank you, Amy, Mrs. Bennett said. That's a lovely postcard. Now quiet, children. No more alligators, please. Who's next? Leah? How about you? Do you and Raleigh have something to show us today? Leah nodded her head shyly. Mrs. Bennett pushed her to the center of the circle. Raleigh was Leah's wheelchair. Once when Leah first started school, her mother had been there with her. Her mother had lifted Leah out of the wheelchair and held her on her lap so that each of the other children could have a turn in Raleigh. Sam had hoped that Leah's show and tell would be that everybody could try Raleigh again. But Leah put her fingers to her lips and said, shh, everybody be quiet. I want you to be able to hear what I learned to do. Zip your lips. Everybody zipped their lips, even Sam. He had to let go of his secret in order to zip his lips. When they were all very still, Leah took a deep breath and swallowed. And then she gave an enormous burp. And she grinned. Fake burp, Leah said. My daddy taught me. All the children forgot that their lips were zipped and they shrieked with laughter. Do it again, Sam called. And Leah did it again very loudly. Show us hell, show us hell. The kids were all calling together. So Leah sat up very straight in her wheelchair and gave fake burping lessons. Fake burp. Fake burping wasn't easy. Skipper finally managed a good one, but most of the children simply giggled and sputtered. And then Nikki got the hiccups. Mrs. Bennett was most successful at it. She did a huge fake burp on her second try and everybody clapped. I know, you wanna try it. Go ahead, try your fake burp. Ooh, some of you are pretty good at it. Okay, okay, Mrs. Bennett said, laughing. Time for just one more person before we go outside on the playground. She looked around the circle. Sam, she announced, it's your turn. Sam stood up. He knew his was better than the palm tree postcard. Oh, but fake burps? Well, it would be tough to be more interesting than fake burps. He took his father's pipe out of his pocket, put the stem into his mouth, then he took a lighter out of his other pocket and tried to push hard on the little wheel that would make the flame appear. All of the children were watching in amazement. Hold it, said Mrs. C Bennett in a loud voice. Stop right there, Sam Krupnik. What on earth are you doing? Well, that was a strange question, Sam thought. Anybody could see that he was lighting a pipe. But he took the pipe out of his mouth and explained to his teacher, I'm lighting my pipe. I'm showing how to smoke my pipe. Not in this school, you're not. Does your father know that you took his pipe? Sam hadn't even thought about that. When he took the pipe, he'd been thinking about how interesting it would be for show and tell. He hadn't thought of it as taking, <gasps> as stealing. Oh, he wished he'd been the one to do the fake burps instead of Leah. He wished Mrs. Bennett's angry face would go away. It's not my daddy's pipe, Sam said. It's my pipe. My daddy has a different pipe. We sit around and smoke our pipes together at home. Oh, oh Mrs. Bennett said. He could tell that she didn't believe him. And my mom and my sister, they both smoke big cigars, Sam added. <laughs> His voice was a little quavery. It was quavery because he was lying, but he couldn't seem to stop. Yep, 
quavery, when you have that little nervousness in your voice, your voice sounds, sounds a little shaky because you're upset or you're worried. Mrs. Bennett took the pipe and the lighter from Sam. She knelt beside him, put her arm around his waist. Oh, Sam felt terrible. All the kids were staring. I'm very glad Sam decided to give us all a lesson about health and safety, Mrs. Bennett said. You taught us an important thing, Sam. I did? You certainly did. We all needed to be reminded about dangerous fire, right? Oh, yeah, right, Sam said. And we should never, ever play with lighters or matches. No, Sam said in a loud voice. Don't anybody ever play with lighters or matches. And what do we think about smoking? Yuck, Sam shouted. The kids in the circle all clapped their hands and said, yuck. Sam looked around and grinned. He was being a bigger hit than Leah. Mrs. Bennett kept the pipe and the lighter. She said she would send them back to Sam's father with the carpool driver. Sam decided as he was putting his jacket on for the playground that when he got home, he would have a serious talk about safety and health with his family and also teach them how to do fake burps. Boys and girls, Mrs. Bennett took a really scary situation where she was angry at first. And then she realized Sam was not realizing he was being dangerous. So she turned it into a lesson that would remind Sam and the other boys and girls how dangerous those things would be, especially for children. So I hope you enjoyed today's All About Sam. I've got to show you tomorrow's picture. Scissors, you're already predicting something. You know Sam. What do you think's going to happen with these scissors? See you then.